Esther 4, 12 to 16. When Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. The book of Esther is also a small book in the Bible, in the Old Testament. Towards the end of the Old Old Testament, you will see Esther. And... um, it's a very interesting book and that's the only book in the Bible that the word God is never mentioned. And that's very interesting. But at the same time you can see the work and the power of God working through people's lives in that book or through from the beginning to end. The story of a young girl who was orphaned while she was very young and was adopted by a relative who should, and was growing up in a foreign land and then eventually becoming the queen of that land. It's a very, very amazing story how God works through circumstances and um, places in our lives. Many times we do not understand why we go through things in our lives and uh, we shared the story of Joseph last Sunday about the things that he had to go through and uh, we talked about how unexpected things will happen but if we look at the whole picture all of this will fit together as a puzzle and we do not want to lose sight of the big picture when we go through the little pieces Sometimes they are painful, sometimes, sometimes we don't like them. But as long as we don't lose sight of the big picture, we will be okay continuing our journey of life. Because God is putting together all of these puzzles in our lives through experiences that do not make sense sometimes, but there's a big picture that God has given us. And look at the big picture. That's what we see in Joseph's life, Esther's life and many other saints in the Bible that we can see. Have you ever found yourself wondering why you were in a particular place at a particular time? I always wonder about myself being here preaching. A guy who was born in a very different situation, in a very different culture and land on the other side of the world, And here I am, in this moment and this time, serving this church and preaching here. And if you look back at your life and all the events that you have gone through, you might wonder, what am I doing here at this moment, at this time? How did I get here? Do you have an answer? I mean, you have gone through a lot of different things to get here. But when you were a young boy or or growing up, you probably never imagined where you would be here now, you would be here now at this time and this place. So a time and a place that God has ordained us every moment where you have to be and where you will be. That is what we we believe or we ought to believe as Christians, people of faith, that nothing happens by accidents or by chance. Any time and any place, any moment in our life, is decided by God and it's divinely ordained. It may be a job or a relationship or even a challenge that you're facing through now has a purpose behind it because God has ordained that time and place for you in that life just like Esther. 
I was reading the story of um, a scientist and um, Louis Pasteur, you all know probably as the scientist who actually dis uh, invented or discovered many medicines uh, in, in, med in med medical history. And one of them was rabies vaccines, vaccine that he discovered or he created. And it's very interesting how that happened because Rabies was a very dreadful disease at that time. There was no cure for it, no medicine for it in the late 1800s. And Louis Pasteur wanted to make a difference and as a scientist he was working on many different medical uh, uh, inventions and one of them was to find a vaccine for rabies. And uh, during that time one of his neighbors children got bitten by a um, dog um, infected by rabies and the family was desperate they knew when you are infected with rabies it was death sentence there is no cure for it but this neighbor knew that Louis Pasteur was working on medicines like this so she went the mother went and talked to him and he said yeah I have some work that is going on in my lab but it's in the developmental stage, we haven't tried it on human beings or anything yet, but I'm, we are working very hard to try it on human beings to find a cure for rabies. So the mom asked him to try it on his chi her child. Even though the reluctance, he did try it, that medicine, that vaccine on the child, and he had to do three or four different times to sh uh, inject that vaccine on that child. And he knew the risk was great. The child may die because he didn't know exactly how it's going to react in humans. But weighing on the risk and balance that either the child will die with the vaccine or eventually the child will die later on with the rabies. So he took a chance with the permission of the parents. And the boy survived. That was the biggest development in the vaccine of rabies. And we still have that in our medicine now. So what did all these things happen? A scientist living in a community and a neighbor's child got bitten by a dog. All of these things happened with a purpose. If you take one piece at a time, it doesn't make sense. Why would an innocent child get bitten by a mad dog and get rabies that doesn't have any cure? The child is going to die. Why did that happen? And this Louis Pasteur was trying something very different and he was there at the right place at the right time. And all of these things came together and that changed the history of medicine forever for rabies vaccine and many others with uh, pa Louis Pasteur. So we are all placed in situations in our lives, in a community where you live, the job that you have, or the friends that you deal with, or the family that you probably don't like, doesn't matter. The church, the, the, the neighbors, everything that, has a, that, that is having an impact on you is <coughs> ordained by God. As people of God, we believe that. Sometimes some of them may not be interesting or enjoyable, some of them may be painful, but at the same time, if as people of God, we are asked to trust in a God who works all of these things together. Each of us is placed in situations where we are to act on faith and knowledge. And that's what Louis Pasteur did. God orchestrates not uh, or orchestrates every time and place as part of his divine purpose. Even if in our old age, the sunset of our lifetimes. Sometimes we think that our role in this world is over, our responsibilities are gone, our children grew up and they have their own families, and we are by ourselves and feel like empty nesters and maybe later on in nursing homes and facilities. But even in those situations, remember that this is one part of the puzzle that God is putting together for the bigger picture for your life. So we should never think that our life is useless or fruitless, even in our situations of weakness and sickness. 
and debilitating situations of our physical body. Continue to trust in a God who is working all of these things together for your blessing, for the blessing of this world, and for also for the glory of God's name. Amen. So let us trust in him. The book of Esther is the story of an orphan girl, as I told you, who was at the right place at the right time. And she took some risks and acted on some decisions she had to make. And that changed the history of the world also. It was written probably about three or four hundred years before Christ when the people of Israel were taken into Babylon for uh, after they took over the kingdom of Israel and kingdom of Judah and took all of these people, some of the good people and talented people to the kingdom of Babylon. This is happening in the kingdom of Babylon while these people who were refugees there, were living there, and this is what's happening there. And Esther was born, and she lost her parents while she was a young girl. So she was adopted by her uncle's son, who is her cousin, an older cousin, who took over her responsibility and uh, raised her as his own child. And uh, she was a little girl, didn't know anything, a Jewish girl living in a foreign country, in a Babylon country. She has probably not much of a future to think of or plan for. But Mordecai, was his, uh, her cousin, had a job in the palace of the king. But he was a very faithful man. He trusted in a living God also. So he was a very faithful man and so he had some good positions and powers and promotions in the job that he had in the palace. Because of that influence of a Jewish man in a different kingdom, of, in, in, with a different king, the people in that palace, the staff, others, were very jealous of him. In the past uh, story that we talked about Joseph, his brothers were jealous of him. But here, the staff in the palace who saw this foreign man becoming an officer in the palace and getting promotions and they were very jealous of him. So there was this one guy called Haman who was very jealous of Mordecai and plotted a plan to kill Mordecai and along with that he also planned to kill all the Jews who were refugees in the country because they knew they were flourishing, they were hard working. So Haman was plotting a plan to kill uh, or Mordecai and also his relatives and all the all Jews in that country. At the same time, something else happened. The king had a big party. Are you listening? Yes. <laughs> all right. Am I losing you? So I, I'm try, trying to tell the story to give you some history behind it. So the king had a big party. So he wanted to uh, entertain all his, uh, you know, big. Uh, staff and, and, and his people, the big people of power and, and wealth in the country. They, he brought all of these people together and had a big party there. And then he also asked his wife, the queen at that time, to come before the party with some fancy dress and all that stuff so that she, he can flaunt her beauty in front of all these people. And he was, um, I mean, she was offended by that. And she said, she, I'm not coming. She, she refused to come to the party because of the way she was projected and, and portrayed by the king in the party. So she refused. And you know what happens when somebody refuses the king? Her queenship is gone. And um, she was sent out from the palace and the king was looking for a new queen. And that's what happening with this time. And he sent out messages to around the country to look for young girls, beautiful girls, talented girls, to be the next queen of the, of the king. So Mordecai knew about it. He came home and talked to Esther. Esther was maybe about 16 or 17 at the time and said, well, you are a very beautiful girl, very talented. Why don't you just apply? She said she was very shy and she probably knew she didn't have a chance. Anyway, she applied for the job and eventually, through all the process that she had to go through, 
she was selected as the queen and that she became the queen of Babylon of a foreign land at that time. Look all these things happening on an orphan girl who had no plans for her future. Think about she had no, no hope other than to just live there, make a living and go on with life. God raised her to a place of power in the palace just like Joseph who found himself in Egypt abandoned by his brothers and sent to Egypt in a foreign country he became the prime minister there so it's just like that Esther became a queen the queen of Babylon who had very good power at the time so when she became the queen at the same time was this thing happening about Haman and the other people plotting is plot against Mordecai and the Jews to annihilate and kill all the Jews. And Mordecai told Esther, and that's what we read here today, Esther, you are the queen now. You are in a place of power that you have never imagined or you have never thought in your life that you would ever become. You are in a place and you are in a time that is appointed by God for a purpose. You have to act on it. So, this is what Mordecai told her. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone will survive and all other Jews will perish. If you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance will come from another place because God will bring out that from another place. But you will eventually perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. That's what Mordecai sent the message to Queen Esther. A little girl, young girl in the palace. He told her that this is the time for you to act. Because God has placed you in a position of power with a purpose. And people of God are going to be destroyed by some plots that are plotted by evil people. And you have to talk to the king. And she was very afraid to go and talk to the king because she's a foreign girl and she just got to be the queen and she didn't know how to handle these kind of situations. So she, you know, if the king gets angry, she might end up in the same position as the previous queen. So she was very afraid and scared of her life and she told uh, uh, Mordecai that, you know, unless the king usually has an appointment, nobody would go to her, even the queen. And it is very hard to get an appointment. And uh, Mordecai said, go ahead and try. This is your time. This is your place. And she took that word and challenge. And then met with the king. And asked for an appointment. And explained all of these things that were going through at that time in the palace and in the country. The king wasn't fully aware of what was going on with the plot to kill all the Jews. When he found out about this plot that Haman was plotting. He was very angry at Haman and all the staff in that palace who were plotting against Mordecai and the Jewish people. So he decided or sentenced all of these people to death. And Haman was actually put to death instead of Mordecai that he wanted to get killed. So that is what the whole picture of this is. And that's how we still have Israel. The people of the Jewish people are still here in this world because it changed history. If Esther had kept quiet and did not use her power, afraid of her life, probably there was not any more Jews in that country, or there was no history of any more Jews. But that was not the divine plan, that was not God's plan. God takes people, simple people, weak people like you and me, and places us in places where we are now. This time and this place of history where you and I are, are, is very important for God. There is a purpose that God is accomplishing through your life and my life. It may be to this church, it may be to your family, it may be to your neighbors, it may be to your workplace. Wherever you are, God is working through you for a purpose in that place that God has placed you. Regardless of how old you are, God is still using you in ways that you probably don't think that you are getting used. God has a purpose for it even 
in the moment of our weak times of our lives. And Mordecai acted at the right time also. Esther also acted at the right time. Remaining silent or doing nothing is not an option for Christians. Even if you are very old and cannot walk, you can still pray. You can still pray for others. We can still pray for the neighbors. You can still pray for the world. Regardless of where you are, in what condition you are, we can do a lot of things to be a blessing in this world. So remaining inactive and silent is not an option for Christians. We have to be active. We have to be always be caring and compassionate and loving about this world to this world. As this Jewish girl who acted on the advice of Mordecai, it changed the history. And such a time and such a place, seizing the God-ordained moment of her life, we are all called through her life to be acting on the ordained time of God's timing in our life. Our time is very important. We all know that all time, regardless of what the developments and times that we are going through are unique time. Every moment is a unique time in life and in history. God's intervention in human history can be natural and supernatural. God is hidden in this book, as I told you, but this is the only book in the entire Bible that is not God is men mentioned, but God's work is revealed right from the beginning to the end of this book. There is a festival called the Purim festival that I probably shared with you that the Jewish people celebrate every year. And this is the festival they remember the story of Esther. During this time of uh, festival, they have some celebrations and they have lunch and dinner together as families and they celebrate the victory of good over evil. And that's what happened with the story of Esther. And uh, the, they will read the book of Esther from beginning to end several times during those three or four days of celebration that they do in the families, in their temples, in their congregations where they, were, they meet. And then the, the name of the festival is called Festival of Purim, P-U-R-I-M. The name of that, the meaning of that word is lot, casting lot, like lottery. Uh, the history behind is that this Haman who plotted the Jews to kill the Jews, he actually cast lots to find a day to declare the death on this, this uh, uh, Jewish people. So he cast lots to find the date that they, he can kill those people. So the Jewish people now celebrate that with casting lots to cast death on evil instead of good. So that's why they call this name uh, the festival of the the called festival festival of Purim, festival of casting lots. That's what it is. And now you all know that the Israel people of Israel are going through a big and troublesome time. And they all know the story, and they are surviving, and they will survive because. They know their purpose in life. They know they are placed in a situation, in a place where they are. And no matter how many times the enemies will try to destroy you, God will intervene and God will give you the power and to, to act upon. It is our responsibility to respond, to use the time and the opportunity to seize the moment and to be acting on the opportunities that God has given us to do. Paul says that you walk uh, circumspectly, understanding the importance of time, redeeming time, because the days are evil. We read that in Ephesians. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the importance of time, the importance of place where we are placed, and to recognize that time and place is the wisdom. So let us pray that God will give us the wisdom to recognize the time and place that we are here, to understand the purpose that God has given us to do. In this church also, that God has given us responsibilities in many different ways. Many times, sometimes it, we don't want to get involved in things. 
because we don't want to take responsibilities, you know, many simple, uh, small responsibilities or big responsibilities, to take ownership of the building or the church, the maintenance, cleaning, many, many things that we have to. But each has its own importance and priorities that God has placed us. So let us take opportunities and seize the moments and uh, be God's witnesses and understand the time and place that we are in to use that for God's glory and the blessing of others. May the good Lord bless us these words as we go from this place to be his witnesses for his love and care and compassion. Amen.